in the Commons during Prime Minister's questions. This all came after the Electoral Commission launched a formal investigation into the funding of Boris Johnson's Downing Street flat refurbishment as more pressure piled on the Prime Minister over allegations of sleaze. Let's take a quick look. Either the taxpayer paid the initial invoice, or it was the Conservative Party, or it was a private donor, or it was the Prime Minister. So I'm making it easy for the Prime Minister. It's now multiple choice. <laughs> there are only four options. It should be easier than finding the chatty rat, Mr Speaker. What I believe has been strained to breaking point is the credulity of the public. Uh, he has half an hour every week uh, to put serious and sensible questions to me about the state of the pandemic, about the vaccine rollout, about what we're doing to support our, our NHS, about what we're doing to fight crime, about what we're doing to bounce back from this uh, pandemic, about the economic recovery, about jobs for the people of this country. And he goes on and on, Mr Speaker, about wallpaper when, as I've told him umpteen times now, I paid for it. Well, joining us now is the political journalist and commentator Isabel Oakshot to reflect on a rather dramatic uh, seven weeks. And uh, let's start with that. Clearly, Boris Johnson rattled and angry, and that's uh, rare for us uh, to see that in the Commons, isn't it? Yeah, so what he was trying to do there was to diminish the significance of this uh, long-running row. It's had quite a, a, a slow burn, this row. It started many months ago and has now really built up. And he tried to bat it off, saying, you know, what people are really worried about is a pandemic and jobs. And all of that is true. But I think what will be worrying Downing Street now is the extent to which the drip, drip, drip of revelations is beginning to cut through with voters. This is a hugely important week coming up for all the parties with so-called Super Thursday elections. And the polls are beginning to look a little bit more worrying for the Tories. They've been way ahead. Uh, and now they are uh, Labour beginning to close the gap there and some serious signs of the wallpaper gate row cutting through with voters. All right, we'll come back to you in a moment. Let's uh, bring in also Deputy Director at British Influence, uh, Jonathan Liss. Uh, afternoon to you. So is this uh, cutting through with the voters? Do they care? Well, I think there are two things here. Uh, the first is, do voters care? And the second is, should they care? Now, I think that corruption is a serious um, issue uh, and it needs to be it needs to be a matter of great public concern. Now, obviously, uh, people may not be thinking about it right now as a bread and butter issue, but it's still vitally important that uh, the standards of public life are upheld. And I suppose it's incumbent upon us as journalists to explain to people why it matters so much. It's not just a question of if, the, if a politician can get away with something, that makes it all right. I think that's a problem that we have in our political culture, that we kind of say, well, if the voters are OK with it, then we don't need to worry about it. I think that we do. And, uh, Jonathan, it is uh, the fact that uh, Boris Johnson seems to have lots of questions to answer, but he, he's clear, isn't he? He is saying he paid for the flat refurbishment. Isn't that enough? So what is the issue? Well, it's like saying if you get caught shoplifting and then you sort of pay uh, for the goods you bought... Um, somehow that makes it all right. You know, we simply don't know when the donation uh, was going to be declared, if at all. And that's why, obviously, the Electoral Commission um, thinks that a crime or crimes may have been committed. And so, obviously, this is a, a serious issue. The whole point here is that we need to know who is paying politicians and how much, because at the moment we don't know how much the Prime Minister is the whole, uh, how much uh, the Prime Minister uh, owes, who he's beholden to. You know, when we have uh, newspaper reports today about you know, the Prime Minister soliciting donations for domestic help, for example. You know, what we know about might just be the tip of the iceberg. You know, the Prime Minister uh, appears to be broke um, by some accounts. And so that means that he might be kind of requesting sort of money or, or gifts from, from sources. We just simply need to know um, who they are, where they're from. And so we can um, highlight uh, the accountability and transparency that we need for uh, the functioning of a democracy. And uh, Isabel Oakshot, where does it go from here? Is it simply down to the uh, Electoral Commission doing their investigation? Well, I think it's also down to journalists continuing to come up with revelations. I mean, I think the revelation in today's Sunday Times, which does not seem to have been denied by Downing Street, that the Prime Minister sought a private donor to help with the cost of his child's nanny is absolutely flabbergasting. I think millions of families up and down the country will be astonished that the Prime Minister, a man of considerable means, was trying to get a wealthy mate to pay for his own baby. 
And I think, I don't suspect really that Boris Johnson has been truly corrupt over any of this. I think it's more about a kind of smell around it. And the fact that he's refusing to answer in a very, very straight fashion what happened leads me to, to be sure that there's something there that he is uncomfortable about, that he's ashamed of. And that's only going to uh, keep on making the press pack smell blood. There is something more to uncover here. Uh, Jonathan, is, is, is that a fact that many people will regard him as being fairly slippery, but nothing sticks to him, Boris Johnson? Well, look, I mean, every prime minister is invincible until they aren't. You know, sort of um, Margaret Thatcher, John Major, Theresa May had great power in their party until they became liabilities. And I think that sometimes it's the things that sort of slip through uh, that become the most damaging things. So as Isabel was just saying, you know, families across the country will be wondering why the prime minister, who has a considerable means, uh, needs to um, get money from other people for his childcare while they have to manage with sort of meagre um, government, government help. And uh, it, it's the same thing, you know, with... Um, crippling austerity by the Prime Minister seems uh, to feel that he can uh, get as many handouts as he wants. And so I think it's a hypocrisy, as, lo as well as the idea that the John, May John Lewis furniture nightmare, for example, that we've been hearing about. I think it's a culture, a smell, as Isabel says, that it's a one rule for them, another for us, and that the Prime Minister just doesn't understand ordinary people. He looks down his nose at them. Frankly, they're disgusting to him personally and a means to an end politically. And that is not the recipe um, for a successful premiership. Well, we'll see what happens in the polls. Isabel Oakshaw, let's talk about uh, Northern Ireland. Arlene Foster resigning as DUP leader and uh, subsequently First Minister.